Hi, it's Dr. Isabella Wentz here. This is actually my very first Facebook Live event, so I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. We're going to go behind the scenes of the thyroid secret today, and we're gonna, I'm going to answer some of your questions. So I know many of you in my tribe have already seen the Thyroid Secret documentary series, and I hope that you've been really, really enjoying it. I've got so many positive uh, letters and messages from people that have watched the Thyroid Secret. One of my favorites was from a woman who, after watching episode five, which was the food episode, ended up changing up her diet. And by episode nine, she said she was feeling significantly better. And this was so powerful, and I'm so excited about this. Um, just to see the the impact that the documentary series is making. So if you're on and if you're watching, I'd love for you to say hello, tell me where you're from, tell me your name, and also let me know if you've seen The Thyroid Secret, what you thought about it, um, and if you've already watched it or haven't watched it, there's um, a link in here that will give you a place where you can go ahead and watch it. So this is really exciting. I'm seeing you guys coming online here and coming on board. Thank you for sending me all the hearts and all the love. I really do appreciate it. Um, I wanted to share with you a few different things I learned over the last year as I was traveling the country recording the thyroid secret. So the reason I decided to record this documentary was because I know that there are so many people suffering with thyroid disease and there are ways that people can get better, but it, it just sort of has been this this secret that's kept among the elite people in natural health or people who can really afford to see fancy doctors. And I don't think that's fair. I feel like every single person with the condition should have access to this information. This is why I wrote my book called Hashimoto's The Root Cause and why I write on my blog um, about all of the different things that I've found to be helpful for thyroid disease. Um, I created The Thyroid Secret because I wanted to get this message out in a big way. And I didn't want to be the only like crazy woman talking about how reversing thyroid disease is possible and that there's more you can do than take thyroid medication. So I decided to team up with a hundred of my favorite thyroid and natural medicine experts, as well as 60 patients with thyroid disease who've been able to recover their health. And through the through the process, I you know I went into it thinking that I like knew everything about thyroid disease, and obviously I've had my share of success in reversing my own thyroid condition as well as helping thousands of others do the same, but there's so much innovation coming out day after day that I've learned quite a few things. I'm really excited to share them with you. Here I see Jacqueline. Hi Jacqueline, I'm from Long Beach, California. Hello, nice to see you. And Sarah, STL area. So she was on a mission trip when it first started, so she's watching it again March 1st. That's awesome, Sarah. Um, March 1st is when we're gonna start off the world premiere. I know some of you guys have already seen the um, the initial behind the scenes premiere sneak peek of the thyroid secret because um, you're a loyal subscriber of my community and I hope that you found that really really helpful. We've done some um, upgrades since that since that time for the thyroid secret so we've taken all of your feedback and changed things up a bit so we're now going to have a schedule page where you know each and every day when something's released and we're actually releasing the episodes at 6 p.m. Um, Eastern time, so to allow for your adrenals to rest and relax. Um, we've also added in some more helpful protocols throughout each episode. Um, Kathy, how, hello from Portland. How are you doing? There's Jess from Manchester, UK. Wow. Uh, Tara from Houston. Nice to see you. And then Sarah from Sydney. Wow. Um, so you, Sarah hasn't seen the documentary yet, so she's going to be tuning in, I hope, on March 1st because it's changed lives already. Yvonne from Ohio, and Taylor from Ohio. How are you girls doing? I wonder if you're neighbors. Donna um, from Swansea, Nina from Oregon, Paula, hello Paula, Erica. Erica wants to know what are the signs of a bad thyroid? That's a really, really good question. So if you have an underactive thyroid or an overactive thyroid, basically you're gonna have a problem with your metabolism when you're either speeding up your metabolism too much, as in an overactive thyroid where you're having palpitations, anxiety, panic attacks, you're losing too much weight without trying, or you could have an underactive thyroid where you're just not losing weight no matter what you do, and you're very, very tired, and you're having apathy, depression, and brain fog. Those are some of the main symptoms that people report, and of course you could do testing for this as well. And we can, we can jump into that. There's Carol from Memphis. Um, Donna says, hi, love. Thanks for everything you're doing to help us. It's my pleasure. 
Mary, hello from San Antonio, Texas. We've got Texas in the house. Um, my husband is actually from Texas, so I always feel like it's my second home. I recently was there and um, may have picked up a couple of pairs of boots, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, but getting back to the thyroid secret. So last year I traveled all around the country to interview the world's top 100 experts in thyroid disease, and I had a chance to connect with about 60 patients. I learned some really, really tremendous insights on this journey. Um, one of the things that I learned um, was actually from a thyroid patient. He talked about that the, one of the biggest, most helpful things for him was to relax and put his body in a physical relaxation state. Uh, this makes a lot of sense because stress is one of the most common things that can cause thyroid disease as well as exacerbate it. So for any of you guys watching, if you have a problem with um, thyroid disease, a really, really important thing to consider is your stress response and how you're reacting to stress and figuring out if you can do something to reduce your stress. Tanya from Edmonton. Hello, Tanya. And let's see, we have Vicki. Um, she's asking, what do you think about low-dose naltrexone for Hashimoto's? Low-dose naltrexone is a really, really helpful medication. If, for those of you that haven't heard of it, naltrexone is an FDA-approved medication that was originally used for addiction. Now, um, there was a doctor named Dr. Bahari that was working with, with people who had addiction problems, and he was trying to give them the smallest dose possible of this medication to help them and prevent side effects. And he was working with compounding pharmacists to get this tiny, tiny dose. One really interesting he noticed is with this tiny dose, it helped the people's addictions, it helped the people um, feel better, and they also didn't have side effects. Another thing that he noted was that it somehow seemed to modulate the immune system. Now, it can be used for any kind of autoimmune condition as well as cancer. Some of the reports from people specifically with Hashimoto's were that low-dose naltrexone can significantly reduce thyroid antibodies and even help some people get into the complete remission range once they just start utilizing this therapy. It's something that has to be um, taken from a compounding pharmacist and you do have to have a doctor's prescription for it, but it's very, very inexpensive. Usually it's $20 to $30 a month and it's virtually side effect free. So this is something that can be taken um, every night at bedtime and the biggest side effect really is going to be vivid dreaming. For some people, the dreams can be scary. For others, the dreams can be very pleasurable. And even, um, even some people will say they have erotic dreams, which some people like. Um, nonetheless, these dreams go away within about two weeks or so once you start the therapy. We do cover low-dose naltrexone in the thyroid secret in episode three, so I hope you'll tune in for that. Um, Marie wants to know, what's the remission range of thyroid antibodies? So, Generally, there isn't an actual definition of remission for Hashimoto's specifically, so various people have sort of made up their own ranges. Um, generally, a remission is, in what I consider the remission, is if somebody is no longer showing symptoms of the condition and if they have a significant reduction in their thyroid antibodies. Um, people have said under 100 is considered remission or under 35 is considered remission. For me, you know, if I have somebody that starts off with the thyroid antibodies in the 1,000 range and they get into the 300 range, for me, I still consider that remission. So I, I often think of it as more of a journey, not necessarily a destination for a lot of people. Yvonne says she can't wait for the thyroid secret. Yes, so it's coming in in less than a week. I, I really cannot wait. Um, I've been behind the scenes um, kind of reviewing all the footage and making sure that it's really, really good and making sure that all of our websites is working and working with our fabulous team to, to get this all ready for you guys. I'm so excited with um, the transformations you're going to have once you watch it. Um, the, another thing that I learned traveling the country was about a really innovative therapy that I was not aware of before that can actually regenerate thyroid tissue. So in most cases we found that it's really easy to prevent the damage to the thyroid gland. Um, I shouldn't say really easy, but once you eliminate the root cause of the condition, you can prevent the damage to the thyroid gland and a person may never need thyroid hormones. Um, in some cases, some people can actually wean off of thyroid hormones with lifestyle interventions and the root cause approach as well. But it, it's not always, um, doesn't happen perfectly every time and it may take some extra time. Dr. Tammy Moralia shared an innovative therapy 
known as stem cell therapy that can actually help regenerate thyroid tissue. We covered that in episode three as well of The Thyroid Secret. Um, Greg and Rachel said they really enjoyed the series. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, let's see here. How do you feel about the Epstein-Barr virus related to Hashimoto's? Melanie wants to know. Um, this was another one of my really big takeaways from the thyroid secret when um, the studies show that thyroid, um, our thyroid gland can, dis can produce disease once because of certain infections. And there's three different ways that this can happen. One of the ways is through um, the bystander effect. This is an autoimmune theory of when there's a virus or another type of infection inside of the thyroid gland and our body tries to um, get rid of that infection by blowing up the home of where the infection lives. And unfortunately, this ends up being the body attacking the thyroid gland. Now, Epstein-Barr virus has been identified more frequently in the thyroid glands of people with thyroid disease compared to those that do not have thyroid disease. And I used to always recommend for, for women to get test, men and women to get tested for reactivation of Epstein-Barr virus. And you could do this through early antigen um, antibodies to the virus to see if the virus is still actively replicating and kind of creating trouble within your body. Um, and then I would recommend various therapies to get the virus to stop replicating as quickly. Now in the thyroid secret in episode eight, we cover this in greater detail, and I actually have a wonderful nutritionist, um, Terry Cochran, who's a, become a good friend, who's making some tremendous uh, discoveries in how to treat Epstein-Barr virus with nutrition. So she recommends something known as the wildatarian diet, as well as um, an herbal protocol with, with various nutrients and supplements. We cover that in episode eight in The Thyroid Secret, and that was, that was a, humong like, a tremendously helpful thing that I learned during this journey. Melissa says, after five months on the autoimmune paleo diet, my antibodies dropped from over 900, wow, and the test couldn't actually measure any higher, so that, that could have been, you know, the, the highest it was measured, down to 300. That's amazing, congratulations. Um, Amran wants to know, do people stop taking thyroxine after remission? So in some cases, people can get off of thyroxine right after they get into remission. In other cases, we may have to work a little bit harder to induce have, getting off of the thyroid hormones. One of the ways people can do that is through using um, therapies like low-dose naltrexone, is through using cold laser therapy, as well as using stem cells. Now, we cover this in episode three of The Thyroid Secrets. Any episode, uh, recommendations for conceiving quicker while having Hashis? It's taking forever. So Carrie, um, you really need to watch episode um, seven, which is the pregnancy and fertility episode of The Thyroid Secret. So we have a dedicated episode that talks all about how to get pregnant if you have Hashimoto's, how to prepare your body for pregnancy. We talk about the best strategies to reduce your likelihood of having miscarriage, of having children born with disabilities, having postpartum thyroiditis. We also talk about what you want to do if you do have postpartum thyroid issues. So I'm really excited for you to tune into that. Um, the link to sign up for The Thyroid Secret is in the description of this Facebook Live event. Um, do you discuss Graves' disease? Melanie, we do discuss Graves' disease, so we have an amazing, amazing expert, um, Dr. Eric Osinski. So he is a Graves expert, and he is a doctor that was able to induce his own Graves into remission through natural therapies. And we do cover that in the thyroid secret. Um, Low-dose naltrexone is also a helpful therapy in that. And pretty much every episode will cover Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, um, and low thyroid function. We, we also cover nodules, thyroid cancer, postpartum thyroiditis, pregnancy, thyroid disease in children. So really, if you have any kind of a thyroid condition, if you know anybody that does, I highly recommend that you take advantage of this. And it, actually, if you guys are on your Facebook, if you could share this broadcast with um, on your page to let people know about the thyroid secret, that would be really, really helpful for us in spreading the word about it. What's the best diet for underactive thyroid? Andrea wants to know. There are a lot of different diets that can help. Some of the diets that I found to be most helpful are gonna be the gluten-free diet, the paleo diet, and the autoimmune paleo diet. What's really, really exciting, in episode five, we had a whole episode on nutrition, and we, I also did a cooking tutorial with my dear friend, Magdalena Shalaki, 
And um, some of the people started just changing their diet right after that episode. One woman wrote in and said that she was able to feel better by episode nine after changing her episode after changing her diet right after watching episode five. Donna wants to know when will this be on? The thyroid secret is coming on on March 1st. I really hope that you check it out. Um, there's a link in here to register for it and it's going to be broadcast every day over nine days. We have a different episode for every single day. Uh, let's see. Andrea says, thank you. Denise asks, do you talk about Hashimoto's and leaky gut? Yes, absolutely. So one of the key things that can cause Hashimoto's is a leaky gut. And this is something that if you can address your leaky gut, you can oftentimes get your Hashimoto's into remission. So I highly recommend checking in The Thyroid Secret. We have a whole episode dedicated to gut health. This is going to be episode eight. And pretty much the whole episode talks about Hashimoto's as well. Hashimoto's, as you guys know, is, if you've been following my work, is the most common cause for hypothyroidism in the United States and in uh, most westernized countries. So some of the developing countries Iodine deficiency is still the issue and still the cause of hypothyroidism in the United States, in Australia, in the UK, in um, South Africa. We're seeing that it's primarily Hashimoto's that is the cause for thyroid disease. And, and this is anywhere from 95 to 100 to 99% of the time. If you have an thyroid, you have Hashimoto's. Uh, Michelle wants to know... Do you feel hypothyroid Hashimoto's graves are contributing to from viral infections? Yeah, absolutely. So both um, Hashimoto's and graves can be connected to viral infections, potentially inside of the thyroid glands. We do cover viral infections in the thyroid secret in episode nine and share some of the protocols that can help you get into remission if that's been your root cause. I oftentimes will tell people to think about doing a health timeline where they go through and um, think about some of the events that led to them having a thyroid condition. And this would be going through any times of illness or stress that you might have had in your life and writing this all out. A lot of times people will notice that as they're going through this exercise, they'll be, they'll be able to identify a triggering event and that really helps to, um, to figure out what you need to do about it. Nina wants to know, how do you know if you have a leaky gut? So if you have a thyroid condition, I would just assume that you have a leaky gut. Some of the symptoms that may make it more obvious would be constipation, diarrhea, bloating, acid reflux, any kind of stomach pains. But you know, in reality, about half of the people that have leaky gut are just not going to have any symptoms at all. Do you address weight loss in one of your episodes? I'm gluten-free now, but I can't seem to gain weight. Amran, so this is a really, really common problem in people with thyroid disease. And actually, one of the reasons could be due to um, having parasites or having gut infections like H. pylori. So we do cover that in the gut infection. Anybody in the gut um, episode, anybody that's had a long-term kind of dietary change that hasn't produced remission, usually there's going to be a gut infection on board for that person. So Working with my clients over the last few years, when, um, when I've done gut testing for the ones that didn't get better after a gluten-free diet or hit a plateau in their healing, about 80% of them had a gut infection. And tests are not 100% reliable, so um, this is something to consider too. Um, Corrine wants to know if we address anxiety, depression in the series. Corrine, we do. We actually have a whole episode that's dedicated to anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, um, actually mental health misdiagnoses that are caused by thyroid disease. So episode two is going to be featuring all of that. We have the wonderful Trudy Scott that's going to be sharing some of her best practices. We have um, Dr. Kelly Brogan and Dr. Hyla Cass as well in that episode. And we all come together to talk about some of the strategies that can be really, really helpful for addressing depression and anxiety. Let's see. Can Synthroid increase weight and hot flashes? Um, Karen wants to know. So in some cases, Synthroid can potentially... Um, cause us to make more reverse T3, which can then lead us to, to more weight gain. So I always encourage people who are on Synthroid to, and they're not feeling their best, to explore other options. 
Natural desiccated thyroid is a great option, as is compounded T4 and T3. We talk about that in um, episode three of The Thyroid Secret. We go into depth about the various type of thyroid medication therapies. Um, Tracy wants to know, when is the show? So this is going to be happening on March 1st, so mark your calendars. If you want to sign up, um, there's a link here to do so. And you'll be able to um, watch each episode on the day that it comes out. March 1st, we have the um, introductory episode talking about the series and the, the overall overview. In the second episode, we talk about the symptoms of anxiety, depression, brain fog. Um, the third episode, we start talking about some of the therapies on how to get back to your health. So we cover innovative therapies like cold laser therapy, natural desiccated thyroid, low-dose naltrexone, as well as some other surprises. In episode four, we start talking about toxins in our environment that can trigger thyroid disease, as well as how you can detoxify. Episode five is when we start jumping into food as medicine and some of these nutrient depletions. Episode six, we get into adrenals and the stress and thyroid connection. This has been one of the favorites from um, a lot of the people that watched it during during our initial release. Episode seven focuses all on fertility and pregnancy. And um, just because you guys are watching, I also have a sneak episode that I, we kind of release in there as a bonus, and it's an interview with me about Hashimoto's. In episode eight, we cover the gut connection and the infection connection. So what are some of the gut issues or what are some of the infections that can contribute to Hashimoto's and how to heal the gut? And then in episode nine, which has been, um, really by far the most heartwarming episode, we share some success stories from thyroid patients from around the country. And that was really, really fun because I got to travel around and meet quite a few of my fabulous readers who've had success in recovering their health. Cheryl wants to know the time for showing. So each episode will be released at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So um, I don't know what time zone you're in, but you, you want to do some math backwards. If you sign up through the link, you'll be able to get um, an email that allows you to put, put the um, event into your calendar so that you don't miss it. This is what I like to do because um, you know, it's really easy to miss things and this will help you get that on your calendar. My endo said that Synthroid is better than the natural desiccated thyroid. Um, Marie, in some cases that may be true but not in every case. So some people just do better on natural desiccated thyroid. And I would ex encourage you to explore different options for yourself to figure out what, um, what works best for you. A lot of the endocrinologists um, haven't really been trained in using natural desiccated thyroid hormones. And so they may say that this is something that is, um, that is, is su that Synthroid is superior, but this is not the case for every patient. In fact, um, through my experience as a pharmacist over the last 10 years, I've pretty much seen that it seems to be the opposite, that most people don't do their best on Synthroid and they seem to do better on natural desiccated thyroid hormones like Nature Throid, WP Thyroid, or Armor. Janet says you're awesome. Oh, thank you so much, Janet. It means a lot to me. Uh, Lily wants to know, is Nature Throid a good medication? Yeah, I think it's one of, a really, one of my top medications that I recommend for thyroid disease. WP thyroid or nature throid, this has T4 and T3 in the bioidentical ratios that we would normally make for ourselves. So a lot of times I'll see people who get on these medications and they feel significantly better compared to when they were on T4 medications alone. Not to say that T4 medications like synthroid levothyroxine won't work for everybody, but um, for some people they just seem to do much better on the natural desiccated thyroid options. Janet wants to know sugars, yes or no to get antibodies down. Yeah, we do recommend um, getting off of the sugars because sugars can cause a lot of blood sugar issues and that's going to be a big trigger for thyroid disease. So if you can get off of sugar, that would be really, really helpful for your condition. The other thing is too, um, aspartame and Splenda can, can be triggering for, um, for autoimmune thyroid disease too. So that's something to please keep in mind. What are your thoughts about tyrosint? Tyrosint is actually one of my favorite T4 medications because it's cleaner and it's better absorbed. So it has very few fillers and many people with thyroid disease will find that it's much easier to absorb. Another fun fact is that um, this was a medication that was studied in Italy 
there was one study showing that thyroid patients were not absorbing their thyroid medications when they were having their meds with espresso. And of course, as pharmacists, I was always taught to recommend that patients wait 30 minutes to an hour to eat or drink coffee after taking their thyroid hormones because that can prevent absorption. With Tyrosint, um, the Italian researchers found a way that patients could still take their meds with their espresso and the meds would still be absorbed. So if you're having a hard time with your medications and just not feeling your best, Tyrosint is an option that can be helpful. Marisa says, thank you for your guidance. Thank you so much, Marisa, it's my pleasure. Um, Sona wants to know, should you stick to gluten-free diet? Yes. Um, and also gluten-free and dairy-free is a really great starting point for people with thyroid disease. This is, this is what you want to do. Valerie wants to know, is taking iodized salt enough for the thyroid? You know, actually iodized salt can be problematic for the thyroid gland. So I do recommend doing additional things. Um, selenium can be a very, very helpful supplement for people with thyroid disease. We cover a lot of the different supplements to support your thyroid in the episode five on nutrients. Thoughts on camel milk, Wendy wants to know. So I wrote an article about camel milk um, a few months ago and it was, it was a pretty popular article. Um, camel milk has really interesting properties because it can be helpful with um, helping the gut as well as potentially helping with, um, with thyroid antibodies. I have seen people benefit from it as far as getting rid of food sensitivities and um, there's been a lot of studies with it in the autism community as well. So that's something that I recommend checking out. Let's see, we have questions, questions. Janet says, I've been sharing and promoting your series because you have shared so much. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um, and if you guys are watching this and online, if you could share this little broadcast with um, on your Facebook page, that would help us get the word out about the thyroid secret. Allison wants to know about stevia. Okay. So stevia, is it good or is it bad, right? And, and it's kind of complicated and it depends on the person. So stevia can actually be helpful for reducing blood sugar. Good thing if you're a diabetic, not such a good thing if you tend to have low blood sugar. Stevia can help to reduce blood pressure. Again, good thing if you have high blood pressure, not such a good thing if you have low blood pressure. Um, which a lot of people with thyroid and adrenal issues do have. So that's something to consider. Um, I always recommend listening to your body whenever you use a product. And it, again, it's going to depend on the person. Uh, let's see. We're getting so many great questions. Thank you so much, you guys. Terry says, hello. How are you doing? Um, Donna wants to know, um, I pre-ordered your book. When will it be released? So the my new book called The Hashimoto's Protocol will be released um, on March 28th. I'm so excited. I've been working on this book for quite some time now. I'm excited to get this information out into the world. Um, this is going to be a 90-day protocol to help you recover your symptoms right away. So regardless of what your root cause is, this book has a plan for you to help you feel better. Um, I piloted the information that's in my book with over um, with over a thousand people now and 65% of them started feeling better within the first two weeks. So I'm hoping that this book will help you tremendously on your journey. Best um, supplements to raise cortisol, Sharon wants to know. So low cortisol is an issue in many people with thyroid disease. In fact, whenever I work with clients who don't get better with nutrition alone, we see that a lot of times they have low levels of cortisol. More than 90% of them do. Now, um, cortisol, people think it's a bad thing, but again, it's one of those things that we need in just the right amounts. It's an important hormone within our bodies. When we don't have enough of it, it's problematic, just as when we have too much. To raise cortisol, um, as long as you don't have blood sugar issues, one of the things you could do is do licorice drops. So this is a supplement where you would take five to 10 drops um, about 30 minutes to an hour before a low cortisol reading, and that can be helpful for raising your cortisol levels throughout the day. Um, I have additional protocols in my book, um, Hashimoto's Protocol, that get dive deeper into what your specific root causes are and how how you go in, like what your specific lab results are, because really the protocols are going to depend on some testing when it comes to the adrenals. I also have an adrenal protocol 
that goes over um, that goes over kind of the the fundamentals that you need to do to get your adrenals back in balance. Karen says, waiting patiently for the 90-day protocol. Well, glad to hear that, Karen. Yeah, our, um, trying to get the publisher to release it faster. I'm like, why so long? Why so long? Um, but they, they've been doing a fabulous job making sure that it's, um, that, that it's turning out wonderfully, and they've um, done such a great job editing it and making sure that it's top-notch and making sure that it's as approachable as it could be. So I think it'll be worth the wait. <laughs> Jennifer wants to know, how did they diagnose Hashi's? So one of the ways to diagnose Hashimoto's is through doing thyroid antibody tests. These tests are known as thyroid peroxidase antibodies, TPO antibodies, and thyroglobulin antibodies, or TG antibodies. These can be done with your um, physician, and mostly, most of the time will be covered on insurance. There's also more advanced tests you could do, like thyroid ultrasounds or fine needle aspiration if you've had a thyroid nodule that you need biopsied. But these tests um, are going to be a little bit more... Um, down the line if you have negative thyroid antibodies. Let's see. Um, top three things to try. So Dreama wants to know. That's what a beautiful name. Um, so the top th three things to try that I always recommend for people with thyroid disease are going to be a gluten-free diet. That's going to help 88% of the time. A selenium supplement. Uh, people will find benefit from that within just uh, three short months the attack on the thyroid gland will be reduced by about half, and then anxiety goes down as well. And then a magnesium supplement. So a magnesium supplement can be really, really helpful in managing um, any kind of cramps, any kind of anxiety, insomnia, constipation. And this is something that should be taken at bedtime and apart from thyroid hormones. Um, I will be doing another Facebook Live about some of the top supplements used in thyroid disease, so stay tuned for that, you guys. Let's see, what vegetables do you suggest? Sona wants to know. Really, any kind of vegetables are really are going to be great for the thyroid gland. There's a big myth about goiterogenic vegetables, and um, I just want to dispel that myth. Uh, goiterogens are not necessarily problematic for people with thyroid disease, especially when they have Hashimoto's. So this is one of those myths. So you can have your broccoli, you can have, um, you can have your cauliflower. In most cases, it's not going to be a problem for people with thyroid disease. And Janin wants to know, what selenium magnesium supplement do you recommend? Um, selenium methionine from Pure Encapsulations is one of my favorites. And then magnesium, I like magnesium citrate from Pure Encapsulations. If you tend to be more constipated and anxious, if you tend towards more um, diarrhea, magnesium glycinate might be a better option for you and from the same company. And then... What milligrams? So for the selenium, you want to do anywhere from 200 to 400 micrograms. From the magnesium, it's going to depend on the version that you're getting, and you would want to follow the package instruction anywhere from one to four per day. Let's see, what other questions do you guys have? Is going gluten-free beneficial even when you have advanced Hashimoto's and virtually no thyroid left? Sarah, absolutely, because what's happening in Hashimoto's is we have an autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland, and this comes in stages. In the very first stage, we're going to see this, this attack. In the very beginning stages, we're going to see this attack, but the thyroid will still be intact. As the condition pro pro continues to progress, we're going to have more and more of the thyroid gland destroyed, and once the immune system is done destroying the thyroid gland, or sometimes in the process of it, it'll start attacking other parts of the body. And one of the key things you can do is to figure out your triggers and root causes. And gluten is very much a common root cause and a trigger for Hashimoto's and 88% of the time in my experience and for other types of autoimmune conditions. So a lot of times when you get off of gluten, you're gonna see your symptoms improve and you're gonna prevent the progression of your condition. Hey, and in some cases, about um, anywhere from 10 to 20% of people can completely regenerate thyroid tissue by going gluten-free. Certainly not everybody, but we have had enough success stories and there's enough research to support this that I highly suggest it for everybody with Hashimoto's and thyroid disease. Let's see. Do you cover Lyme disease? Tara, we do cover Lyme disease. We covered that in episode eight when we focus on infections. Uh, Sharon wants to know tips to help with fatigue. So one of the most helpful things for fatigue is going to be the supplement known as thiamine. 
Thiamine at 600 milligrams per day can help reverse thyroid fatigue within about three days or so. If you go to thyroidpharmacist.com and search for thiamine, you'll be able to see my article on that and which form I recommend. And does levothyroxine really have gluten in it? Kylie wants to know. Kylie, sometimes um, some brands of levothyroxine may have gluten in it. I do have a blog post on thyroidpharmacist.com that goes over which of the um, levothyroxine versions have gluten, which ones do not. And so you want to search for gluten on the blog post. What does it mean when you have Hashis and suddenly go hyper? So when you have Hashis, you can actually go hyper. Um, one of the things that happens in Hashimoto's is we have thyroid antibodies that attack the thyroid gland. And as these antibodies attack the thyroid gland, we're going to see a destruction of the tissue and thyroid hormones getting rushed into the bloodstream. Now, this is known as Hashi toxicosis and this can cause symptoms of a hyperactive thyroid. We can also see that a person may switch from Hashimoto's and Graves' disease back and forth. Um, this is not as common, but, but this is very much um, a potential mechanism because the immune system basically starts attacking one part of the thyroid gland and then switches over to another part. And then Carrie says, hi, Dad. So that's nice that dad, her dad is on here too. Um, and TJ says, gluten-free has helped, but I'm sorry. I lose weight drinking coffee. That's wonderful to hear that you found out something that, it, that is working for you. Um, I think coffee for me is beneficial. Talk about that. Um, is everybody absolutely sure that coffee isn't wonderful? So yeah, coffee is another one of those things. For some people, it's really, really great. For other people who have shot adrenals, it might actually benefit them to get off of the caffeine and get off of the coffee for a time period. Other people might have genetic polymorphisms that mean that they do not respond to caffeine well. So it's going to depend on you. And really, one of my biggest goals for you guys with the thyroid secret and with the work that I'm doing um, is so that you could find out and tune into your own body and figure out what the subtle messages your body is trying to tell you. Because when you really come down to it, your body is you know, designed or has evolved to protect you. This is why the thyroid gland evolved and our thyroid gland is our env environmental sensing gland. This is something that helps us figure out if our environment is safe and if we could be out in the world creating or to help us figure out if our environment is um, threatening. And in that case, the thyroid gland helps us withdraw from the world and helps us protect ourselves by helping us carry on extra weight. And so key here is sending your thyroid gland these safety signals and figuring out how to communicate with your body. Um, symptoms like acid reflux, for example, are oftentimes going to be your body's way of telling you that something is wrong. Now, this could be a um, this could be because you're eating something that you're sensitive to, like gluten or dairy, or this could be because you have an infection like H. pylori or even SIBO. Or, you know, in some cases, and this is something that I learned on the thyroid secret, is when you're actually not speaking your, your voice and you're holding back some things, that can actually cause acid reflux. And then once you, um, once you kind of get in a better alignment with your body, you can start seeing these symptoms resolve. And so for me, um, acid reflux, this is how my body likes to tell me that things are out of balance. And initially getting off of gluten and dairy helped me do that. And um, for the first time ever, I had, um, during the thyroid secret, I had a flare-up of that, and, and it was actually because I wasn't communicating something. So once I was able to get that out, no more acid reflux. So this is something that I really want you guys to, to kind of get in tune with to figure out what works for your body and what doesn't work for your body. I could tell you from a statistics standpoint that 88% of people feel better gluten-free and that 80% of people feel better dairy-free. So this is a really good starting point for you guys, but you may have to um, kind of dial in a bit deeper. So once you get off of these foods, you'll start to pick up on your body's subtle messages of, hey, this food is not working for me. Hey, this, this situation is not working for me. Um, Brandon wants to know, do I give up gluten if a test said I was not positive? Yeah, the tests we have, we're going to see a lot of false negatives on them. And really the best test in my experience for Hashimoto's has been to just go ahead and get off of it for three weeks and see what happens. So I actually had negative tests for celiac disease, 
and all these negative tests. And within three days of getting off of gluten and dairy, I felt significantly better. Um, and a lot of times this happens across the board with many of my clients and my readers, um, people that have been through my through some of my courses. 88% of the time, people feel better. So um, I highly recommend that you do take this change and take this time to do it for yourself. You can always go back to eating gluten if it doesn't work out for you. Um, Mariana, do you recommend B12 supplements for fatigue? Yeah, B12 can be really, really helpful. I like the methylcobalamin and the hydroxycobalamin version. Um, let's see here. So many great questions, you guys. Wow, moving so fast. What's the best way to overcome Epstein-Barr virus? Is there a time frame? I'm doing lauric acid, vitamin B, D, selenium, and several other supplements. So, um, Angela, one of the things we cover in the thyroid secret in episode eight, um, our, one of our clinicians, Terry, covers a wonderful protocol that she has developed for people with Epstein-Barr virus that uh, recommends uh, her wild vegetarian diet and some fantastic um, supplements as well. So I highly encourage you to check into that. And um, Debbie says, people just don't understand what Hashimoto's is and do not understand the struggle. Any advice? Uh, Honestly, have them watch The Thyroid Secret. So I know a lot of people have wrote in. They've watched The Thyroid Secret with their family members. This is designed for you guys to be able to sit back at home in your pajamas with a glass of tea and sit on your couch and just watch the documentary series. I try to make it really fun and entertaining for everybody and kind of switch things around fast so to keep your interest. And many people have reported watching it with their family members and spouses and the spouses are now on board and now they are starting to get it. So we go through what it feels like to have thyroid disease and what some of the struggles are in pretty much every single episode of the series. So if you could get your family members just to watch one episode, I think that would really help you and your family get on the same page and help you recover your health because we know that people who have supportive family members have the best potential possible outcomes. So I've got to run now. Um, I have some dinner, fun dinner coming up with my hubby here. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and for being witness to my first Facebook Live event. It was a lot of fun to have the opportunity to chat with you guys um, and seeing all of your wonderful comments coming through. Um, please be sure to check out the Thyroid Secret series. It starts on March 1st. I really think it'll help you greatly on your journey. I can't wait to hear the feedback that you get from watching us. Um, please share with your friends and loved ones and anybody that you know that might have thyroid disease. Again, um, go to um, the link here we have to, to go visit the Thyroid Secret so you can sign up for this important series. It's going to be free online just for nine days. Um, so we, we're hoping to get this message out into the world in a big way so that people don't have to struggle with their thyroid disease. And um, yeah, let me know how you guys like this Facebook Live event, if this is something you'd like to do every now and then and hang out and just chat. This has been a lot of fun for me. Let me know if you liked it. Um, I have a couple of more ideas up my sleeve. One of the things I'd love to talk to you about is some of the top supplements for thyroid disease. Um, if you guys want to talk about top tips for fatigue, uh, let me know in the comments what, um, what some good topics for future Facebook Live events would be. So again, so nice to see you guys. Um, bye, Cindy. Bye, Sonia. Thank you so much for your kind words. And I really hope that you check, in this, check out this series. I hope it helps you.